Revelation, the closed book open. Hello, welcome back to Midship Ministries. We have been studying the book of Revelation and we are on the uh, subject, the slain lamb. We continue today to do biblical background work on the subject. Pray with me, please. Father in heaven, we continue to thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your forgiveness of sins. Thank you for the privilege of knowing you, of having a relationship with you. Bless us now as we study your words. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, question number six. What did Abraham tell Isaac, his son, that God would do when they arrive at their place of sacrifice? Genesis 27, verses 7 and 8. Very prophetic. What would God do? He would provide himself a lamb. That was, was Abraham's response. To Isaac, who asked, where is the sacrifice? The response, God will provide himself a lamb. The location was significant. Solomon's temple built on it centuries later. The sacrifice altar was built upon a large bedrock. A little distance away was Golgotha. This same mountain top spot, the same mountain top spot in central Palestine was anciently called Moriah. That's where Abraham and Isaac were. But centuries later, it had another name. It was called Golgotha. There, the blood of Christ was slain or was shed. At the very outset of his earthly ministry, what title was ascribed to him? In John 1 verse 29, it says, the Lamb of God. As Jesus approached, John was baptizing. And when Jesus approached, John's response was, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. How does this Lamb take away our transgression? Isaiah 53 verses 5 through 7 says, By his wounding he was bruised, battered, for our sins, for your sin and my sin. What was the most prominent feature of the Old Testament sacrificial system? Hebrews 9.22 says it was the shedding of blood. The shedding of blood. Today, we do things differently in church. In Old Testament times, the church was a veritable butcher shop. The horrors of the results of sin was impressed upon the minds of the worshippers. Today, we take the bread and wine. And let me, you know, just think of it that when you go to church, you would have to kill an animal, sacrifice for your sins. You know, I wonder sometimes if we would sin as much. There are some people who, who can't kill a chicken. Can you imagine if every time you sin, every time we sin, we would have to take an animal or a bird or something like that 
and would have to kill it. Would we sin less? I wonder. But this was what the Old Testament people experienced. They had to take the lives of birds and animals and so forth. What came upon all men as a result of the death of Christ? Romans 5.18 Therefore, as by this, the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification. The benefits of Calvary are available to all, but not automatically. There is something we must do or else we will be lost. We must believe and accept. You know, somebody asked, the sin committed by Adam so far back affects us today. Yes, it does. You know, it's like it's in our genes. Every man, every person born on the face of the earth is affected. You know, there is a, a disease called hemophilia. They say it is known as the... Uh, Royal disease. In this particular royal family, every male born to that family is affected. It is a disease that uh, uh, prevents the blood from clotting easily. That's what sin is, friend, to the human race. It's a disease that affects every human being born on the face of the earth. Who only will not perish in their sins? John 3.16, well, very well-known passage, says, Whosoever believeth in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everyone is capable of being saved. Salvation is not impossible for some. It is not something that is reserved for only certain ones. If we are lost, it would be our own fault. Because salvation is available to you and to me, to all of us. And if I should advise you, I would say to you, accept the salvation that Christ offers so that you and I can be saved in his kingdom. Bow your heads with me. Loving Father, again we thank you for your words. We thank you for the invitation to accept your salvation because of, the, what, of what you have done on Calvary's cross for us. May we not allow that sacrifice to go unheeded. Bless us now, is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you, friends, again, for clarity and for additional information. Contact your local Seventh-day Adventist church. Until next time, God bless you.